From an active volcano in Iceland that's on the brink of a massive eruption, and a caldera in Naples, Italy that threatens the lives of 3.1 million people, to a volcano in southern Peru that could destroy the global copper industry, and one of the most active volcanic sites in Indonesia that people love hiking on. Here are our picks for volcanoes that could erupt in 2024. After Rome and Milan, Naples is the third largest city in Italy. It's home to about 3.1 million people and a supervolcano that could easily erupt in the near future, maybe even in 2024. The Phlegrian Fields, known locally as Campi Phlegrai, is an eight-mile caldera encompassing part of Naples and extending south beneath the Gulf of Pozzuoli. The caldera formed after two massive eruptions, the Campanian Ignimbrite eruption roughly 36,000 years ago and the Neapolitan Yellow Tuff, which saw over nine cubic miles of magma spewed into the air about 15,000 years ago. Today, Campi Flegrai sits along the Campanian Volcanic Arc, which includes Italy's most famous volcano, Mount Vesuvius. According to the Smithsonian, the last known eruption at Campi Flegrai occurred in 1538 CE. Now, there's been some activity since the Roman times, but nothing overly concerning. At least, not until now. As of 2023, 1,000 minor earthquakes have struck around Campi Flegrai. For some, the seismic activity stokes fears that the mountain could erupt after nearly 500 years. While many experts say there's nothing to worry about, the Italian government isn't taking any chances. They've opened discussions on how to evacuate tens of thousands of people from the immediate area. About 2.2 million people live within three miles of the volcano. About 6 million live within 60 miles. The last time we saw similar activity at Campi Flegrai was in the 1980s. The seismic unrest caused the port town of Pozzuoli to rise by 6.5 feet, causing some structure damage. Now, according to experts, if nothing bad happened back then, there's no reason to believe something will happen today. But if Campi Flegrai did erupt, the effects would be devastating. About a million people living in the immediate vicinity would be affected. Ash and volcanic gas would pollute the air, and earthquakes would cause significant damage to buildings and infrastructure. Sulfur dioxide in the air would also lead to acid rain. Hopefully, the experts are right, and there's nothing to worry about at Campi Flegrai, but only time will tell. Anak Krakatau is among the most famous volcanoes on Earth. It's also the most mispronounced. Many people, including myself, mistakenly say Krakatoa when the official name is Krakatau. What's even funnier is the fact that Krakatau hardly exists anymore, at least in its original form. A massive eruption in 1883 destroyed about two-thirds of Krakatau Island in the Sunda Strait off the west coast of Indonesia. About 50 years later, the modern-day cone of Anak Krakatau, or Child of Krakatau, grew within the 1883 caldera. It's been the site of frequent eruptions ever since. Experts count 57 confirmed eruptive periods in the Krakatau location since the Holocene period began about 11,700 years ago. The most recent eruptive period began in May of 2021 and continues as of December of 2023. On Friday, June 9th of 2023, Anak Krakatau erupted twice in one hour. It spewed volcanic ash nearly 10,000 feet into the air and caused concern for those living nearby. According to reports, the closest settlement to the volcano is just over 10 miles away. Fast forward to November, when geologists with the Indonesian Center for Volcanology reported more intense explosions than seen thus far. The fear is that another major eruption at Krakatau could repeat the 1883 event. It could trigger powerful earthquakes and send massive tsunamis toward the Indonesian coast. In 1883, the impact was devastating. Hopefully, we can avoid a major humanitarian disaster with modern technology and planning. In mid-November of 2023, Iceland declared a full-on state of emergency. Seismic activity on the island's southwestern tip caused many to fear a massive eruption at the Fagradalsfjall volcano. 
According to Thor Thordarsson, a volcanology professor at the University of Iceland, there is a nine-mile river of magma running beneath the Reykjanes Peninsula that is very active. The Reykjanes Peninsula is home to about 28,000 people. It's one of the more densely populated areas in Iceland, so people are extra concerned about a volcanic eruption. The volcanoes on the peninsula had been dormant for about 800 years. Then, in 2021, they began waking up. According to the experts, the Magma River went from being 4,900 feet underground to about 2,600 feet in a matter of hours. Furthermore, over 20,000 tremors have been recorded in the area since late October. The fear is that the magma tunnel could reach the fishing town of Grindavik. If that happens, there's no telling how much damage it could do. Earthquakes had already taken their toll on the area. Roads split in two, and you can see steam and smoke pouring from the ground. The once thriving fishing town looks more like a ghost town after the evacuation order. Unfortunately, those forced to evacuate don't have a clear timeline for returning home. According to authorities, it could be months before the danger zone is safe again. They've also shut down the Blue Lagoon, a geothermal resort and one of Iceland's top tourist attractions. Icelandic officials say there is a significant likelihood that the volcano will erupt along the nine-mile magma tunnel. They just don't know where. The Aleutian Arc is a chain of 14 volcanic islands and 55 smaller islands off the west coast of Alaska. Each island gets progressively smaller as they stretch further into the Bering Sea. In total, there are 57 volcanoes in the Aleutian Arc. Altogether, they form the northernmost part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. The Alaska Volcano Observatory has been closely monitoring one of those volcanoes, Mount Shishaldan. The 9,300-foot snow-capped mountain is among the most active volcanoes on the Aleutian Arc. It's located on Unamak Island, the largest in the long chain. We've been recording activity at Shishaldan since the 18th century. Most of the activity consists of stromboli and ash eruptions with occasional lava flow. In other words, it's not too much to worry about. If anything, planes flying overhead appreciate the heads up. Shishaldan entered a new phase of eruptive activity in the summer of 2023. The volcano unleashed an ash plume that stretched between 6 and 7.5 miles into the air. The last time Shishaldan erupted with such force was in 1999, when it blew an ash plume about 8.5 miles high. Seismic and eruptive activity continued well into the summer and continued through December. Previous eruptions at Shishaldan lasted for several months. Experts believe the 2023 eruptive period will follow a similar pattern. They anticipate activity well into 2024. Thankfully, Shishaldan is in the middle of nowhere. The remote Arctic landscape makes it difficult to observe with the naked eye, but that also means humans aren't in danger if it erupts. Now, if it did explode, it would only affect those living within 10 miles. The closest community to the volcano is Falls Pass, a fishing town of about 35 people. Luckily, they're about 23 miles away from the summit. They'd only need to worry about an ash eruption, as those clouds can travel much further and pose risks to people and aircraft. Nestled in the desolate Moquegua region of southern Peru is an 18,600-foot stratovolcano that's got everybody on edge. Mount Ubinas is Peru's most active volcano. It's the northernmost of three young volcanoes, about 31 miles from the main volcanic front. The most powerful eruption at Mount Ubinas occurred about a thousand years ago, in 1082 CE. According to the Global Volcanism Project, it was a powerful blast with a maximum of 5 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI. That puts it on par with the eruption at Mount Vesuvius that wiped out Pompeii in 79 CE. Since then, Mount Ubinas has experienced many pockets of minor eruptions. Things ramped up in July of 2023, when Ubinas spewed gas and ash over 18,000 feet into the air. The cloud reached towns several miles away, posing a significant risk to the people living there. It was so bad that Peru declared a 60-day state of emergency on July 5th of 2023. While nobody was forced to evacuate, they were inclined to seek shelter in a special bunker that the Peruvian government built in 2019. Now, some worry that a catastrophic eruption at Ubinas could cripple the global copper industry. 
Peru produces the second most copper in the world behind Chile. However, all those copper mines between both countries are mixed in with volcanoes. These volcanoes are part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, meaning they experience frequent earthquakes and volcanic activity. Ubinas has been extremely active since the start of the 21st century. Since 2006, there have been five confirmed eruptive periods, each lasting for several years. There's good reason to believe the volcano will continue erupting in 2024 and beyond. Indonesia is among the most eruption-prone places on Earth. It's home to over 120 active volcanoes, and its location on the Pacific Ring of Fire leaves it prone to frequent seismic activity. On December 3rd of 2023, one of the most active volcanoes in the country woke up. The scary part? There were about 75 hikers on the mountain when it blew its lid. Mount Marapi is a highly active volcano complex in West Sumatra, Indonesia. It stands about 9,500 feet tall and looms over many small cities and towns. It's easily confused with Mount Merapi, another highly active volcano in Java, Indonesia. Now, there's a reason that people call Merapi Fire Mountain. It's been erupting regularly for the past 300 years. When it does, it tends to produce significant lava flows. But despite all the dangers, people love hiking on the active volcano. On Saturday, December 2nd, 75 hikers ventured up the mountain. By the time it erupted on Sunday, 49 had been evacuated, with 26 still missing. Hot white and gray ash plumes stranded the hikers and spread volcanic material over nearby villages. Continued activity delayed all rescue attempts until Monday. By then, much of the damage was done. Local volcanologists had been begging local agencies to stop allowing climbers and hikers on the mountain. In fact, ash eruptions between January and February prompted them to close the trails only to reopen them for the summer. If we had to guess, thrill seekers pay good money to walk about two miles away from the crater of an active volcano. The last missing hiker was recovered on December 6th. Sadly, they were among 23 hikers who never made it off the mountain. Kruzov Island is an uninhabited part of the Alexander Archipelago in southeastern Alaska. It's home to the region's only volcano, Mount Edgecombe, a 3,100-foot stratovolcano. It's part of the Edgecombe Volcanic Field, which covers about 100 square miles of Kruzov Island. Volcanic activity originated here about 600,000 years ago. Those fissures actually cut Kruzov Island from the mainland. Its last known eruption was 2080 BCE. However, indigenous oral tradition claims that there was an eruption between 800 and 900 years ago. Many believe Mount Edgecombe is due to blow sometime soon. Between late 2022 and early 2023, the Alaska Volcano Observatory saw magma moving up through the Earth's crust beneath the Edgecombe field. Satellite imagery shows the magma had risen from 12 miles underground to 6 miles underground. It triggered several earthquakes and caused significant deformation around the surface. In light of both events, the volcano was reclassified from dormant to historically active in 2022. According to the Alaskan scientist, it was the fastest rate of volcanic deformation that we currently have in Alaska. While it isn't uncommon for volcanoes to deform, the activity at Edgecombe is odd because reactivation of dormant volcanic systems is rarely observed, according to our Alaskan expert. In early 2023, hikers reported gas bubbling from a lake near the mountain. Meanwhile, satellite imagery showed the ground near the volcano was bulging upward. Again, this activity isn't uncommon in volcanic areas. If an eruption were to happen, there would be much more evidence leading up to it. For now, the Alaska Volcano Observatory is keeping its eye on this one. If it does erupt, the town of Sitka would be in the line of fire. They're about 14 miles away across the Sitka Sound. It's home to roughly 8,400 people who admit they're worried about an eruption, but are willing to trust the science. The Long Valley Caldera in central California is among the largest on Earth. It measures about 20 miles long, 11 miles wide, and roughly 3,000 feet deep. 
The massive depression sits about 40 miles outside of Yosemite Valley, 250 miles north of downtown LA, and 200 miles east of San Francisco. That is to say, there is a lot of people within range of a catastrophic eruption. The Long Valley Caldera formed about 760,000 years ago after a super eruption blasted 140 cubic miles of magma into the air. It covered most of East Central California, with ash spreading as far as modern-day Nebraska. Then, the Long Valley area sat dormant until May of 1980, when scientists began noticing earthquakes. Several magnitude 6 tremors caught their attention, and they've been closely monitoring Long Valley ever since. Today, scientists in the United States are watching Long Valley like Italian scientists are watching Campi Flegrai. The seismic activity is concerning but there isn't a reason to freak out yet. That said, calderas like these are extremely hard to study. They're massive depressions that are often full of trees, lakes, and other life. For example, many people forget that Yellowstone National Park is just one big volcano. Thankfully, there are signs that the magma beneath the Long Valley is cooling. This leads volcanologists to believe that an eruption is highly unlikely. But that's not to say they're ruling one out indefinitely. Earthquakes don't necessarily mean an eruption is coming. Yellowstone experiences about 2,000 earthquakes each year. Imagine if we freaked out every time one hit. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.